We are moving into the age of cheap energy. According to Goldman Sachs Bank, next year the oil price will drop to $20 a barrel. I'm very get, bad at these predictions, but okay, Goldman Sachs rules the world, so let's believe them. So if it's going down, ladies and gentlemen, it's even better. We are now entering the age of permanent cheap energy. Have a look at this one. The trouble with wind power is that it needs to be windy. And if you're like me, you like to get your shade from a nice beach umbrella, not a noisy 300 foot tall windmill. Luckily, Makani Power, an engineering firm run by a California wind surfer, has come up with a pretty cool idea. They have a wind harvesting drone attached to a rope. The most effective part of a turbine blade is the tip. So the Makani Airborne Wind Turbine travels in a vertical circle in the same path as the tip of a conventional turbine blade. Wing-mounted rotors catch the rushing wind, which is converted into electricity by small generators and sent back to the ground via the tether, which is a conductive cable. It's possible that these Makani turbines could be flown out over the ocean where winds are particularly strong. Now, the electricity they generate could just be sent down to buoys floating in the ocean and collected later to be sent back to land. Now, if you're in the windmill industry, this is bad news because this is extremely effective. And this and the finance, the, the, the company which is financing this is Google. But it was created by a startup. A startup which came up with a brilliant invention. Google bought it and it's extremely, extremely efficient. And these are windmills coming from Spain in the form of a tree much better looking than the horrible things we have today. And a lot of people are worried about climate change, that climate change is going to ruin us. Don't be afraid, never be afraid of the future. The BBC organized a competition amongst the smartest people in the world. Now, you are smart, but there are a few people who are a bit smarter than you, and those are the Nobel Prize winners who are still alive. And the BBC asked them, you're the smartest people in the world. Let's assume climate change is going on. One, two, three, four degrees extra. What would be the best solution? The winning solution is this one. Stephen Salter has been working with clouds since the 1980s, but the challenge now for him and John Latham was to figure out how not to make it rain, but to increase cloud cover. Stephen Salter has designed a remarkable vessel. We've reproduced it here with computer graphics. It's designed to deliver the tiny droplets needed to boost the clouds but it's a vessel that wouldn't produce any carbon emissions. Emissions that are now thought highly likely to be worsening the very problem these scientists want to solve. It's an extraordinary wind-powered yacht. The Flettner rotor was originally invented by Anton Flettner, a German engineer in the 1920s. The rotor spins round at high speed, performing the same function as sails, but 15 times more powerful providing the forward thrust to drag a huge propeller through the water. The boat would be radio controlled and unmanned, sailing backwards and forwards through the ocean, spraying seawater vapor into the clouds like a giant spray gun. John Latham and Stephen Salter have calculated that to make enough shiny clouds to control the temperature of the earth, they would need to spray 500 kilograms or liters of water per second every year. Well, and there's enough. Seas full of water, oceans full of water, and it gets down in the form of rain again. So it's no problem. Don't worry about climate change. It's solved. And have a look at this. A British Nobel Prize winner getting back a German ID from the 1920s. Who of you is from Germany? You are brilliant engineers. You are really the engineering people. You know it. I'm, I'm married to a German. I know. I'm a little bit not very objective. But, but this is what's happening. So it's solved. But I asked a guy at Greenpeace, wouldn't it be wonderful if it would be solved? No, he said. Nobody's going to give us money anymore. We're losing all our donations. Vested interest. And that's also a little, little problem. So be aware. We human beings, we are brilliant. We are genius and we can do anything. And we will, especially in times of crisis. Have a look at these windmills. Based on the same German technology I just saw you. These are coming from Spain. No, uh, no uh, windmills, but without all these uh, uh, things. What are they called? I forget. But it doesn't matter. Eh? Standing windmills and that is all how it works. And have a look at how much energy we can get from the sea. Just off the Irish coast, the world's first commercial-scale tidal turbine is at work. The power of the ocean and the turbine's advanced technology guarantee a much more predictable energy output than other renewables. 
twin 16 meter rotors and horizontal axis to capture kinetic flow. 180 degree pitch control to generate power from flood and ebb tide, providing a predictable runtime up to 20 hours per day. Amazing, and the fish know it, so we don't get fish shoot. The fish know we shouldn't swim there. The birds don't know it, that's why many of the birds are killed. And have a look at this little girl. This is Leslie Dewan. At the age of 21, she decided to build a new nuclear power plant. There are some people who do something else when they're 21, but she said, I'm going to do it. And this is it. It looks very green, very beautiful. And it works on nuclear waste. So it uses all the nuclear waste we have in the world, and we have enough for 70 years free energy. It uses it, it destroys it, and in the process creates very cheap energy. When it's finished, it splits over to, to thorium. Thorium is an alternative to uranium, but you can never make bombs of it, and it can never explode. When she started it with this, at the age of 21, yeah, because it's these millennials, it's these young people who question everything that we old people of 25 and older, what we think is normal. They question all these things. They say, what, what about it? We are going to do it. She came up with it. Everybody laughed at her. And last week, both time and fortune crowned her 150 people who are going to change the world. This is what's happening. Give room to young people. Give room to crazy ideas. And this is what we're going to see. So for the first time in quite a long time, we're going to see a phase, a period in capitalism with very cheap energy prices.